الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات ربه وسلامه عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن دعا بدعوته الى يوم الدين اما بعد Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum al-siyamu, kama kutiba ala al-ladhina min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqun. As I indicated last week, inshallah, today we will try and elaborate and explain further the this verse of the holy quran and particularly the word taqwa now this verse contains two statements it firstly says ya ayuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam that fasting is for everybody no exceptions that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made fasting an obligation on every Muslim. <coughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a second statement. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That the purpose of fasting is to develop taqwa. There is no other purpose for fasting except to develop taqwa. These are very two important statements. First is that fasting is for everybody and the objective of fasting is to develop taqwa. It should be quite obvious now that if fasting is for everybody, then taqwa should also be for everybody. Isn't it so? If fasting is for everybody and the objective of fasting is to develop taqwa, it means that all of us are duty bound to be of the muttaqeen, to be of those who will enter Jannah. Now, it means then that taqwa is not just for a select group of people that we call hazrats or muttaqis or pious people or some name that we give to them and say these people are apart from us, they are muttaqis. We are the ordinary Muslims and they are the muttaqis. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that every person has to be, you have to become a muttaqi. And I'll tell you why you have to be a muttaqi. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, the third surah, in verse 133, Allah says, للمتقين. Allah says, and enter the race. Become part of the race, the competition. <clears throat> we live in a time, time of competition. We have, the, we have the Olympic Games now. And the Olympic Games is all about, all about competition. It's all about outdoing the other one, earning a gold medal. And so Muslims in the month of Ramadan are also in the, oh, their own Olympics, called the Olympics of Taqwa. Some of us are in front, some of us are behind. But there is no other race. So you can't say, well, I'm not running in this race. I'm running in the 100 meters. You guys are running in the, in the 1,005. No, 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 no. We're all running in Ramadan. We're all running in the same race. The race is called taqwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this race in the Quran. Allah says, sari'u, meaning, take part in the race. What race? Ila maghfiratim mar rabbikum. The race for the forgiveness from your Lord. The race for the forgiveness from your Lord. Number one. Number two. وَجَنَّةٍ أَرْضُ وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ أَرْضُ First, forgiveness from Allah. And what is the other objective of the race? What is the other gold medal? The Jannah. Whose length and breadth, says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the length and breadth of the universe. And the earth. 
I spoke to you the other day about Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. And Voyager 1 having reached the outer theoretical uh, boundaries of the universe. And that Voyager aircraft has been flying now for 35 years. And it's only reached the outer limits of our galaxy, of this Earth galaxy. There's still a million galaxies after that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then ends the verse by saying, Okay, you are going to take part in this race, Muslims. You are part of it. There's no other race. So you're in the race. Whether you're walking, crawling, but you're in the race. Only when you die, then you're out of the race. For number one, forgiveness from Allah. Number two, Jannah. And for who is this Jannah? Who does Allah promise Jannah to? Uiddat, which is promised? Lil muttaqin. Allah says, I promise the Jannah only for the muttaqin. Which means that every one of us must become a muttaqi. If you're not a muttaqi, then you will not go. Then you may participate in the race, but you will not get any medal at the end of the race. So we are then... There's no, there's no choice. You can't say, well, I'm an ordinary Muslim, you know, I'm not a muttaqi, uh, you know, I'm just a, you know how people are, it's, it's, it's all about an excuse. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a weak person, I'm a you know, weak Muslim, you know, so I can't do what the other one. <laughs> you can't use an excuse. You're in the race, brother and sister. And you have to do good in this race and become a muttaqi. Now, what is taqwa? <clears throat> we should define taqwa some... What do we say when you know, people say on the radio, you know, may Allah give him taqwa, iman, taqwa, iman, taqwa, iman. What is taqwa? Taqwa has generally two meanings. One is, general meaning is fear of Allah. But it doesn't mean fear of the that of Allah. It doesn't mean you fear Allah as the creator or the sustainer. No, it means you fear the adab of Allah. You fear the jahannam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for men and jinn. Number two, the second meaning is consciousness of Allah. To be aware of Allah at all times. Nabi Musa, as I said the other evening after the tarawih, Nabi Musa, he said to Allah, Oh Allah, كيف أشكرك? كيف أشكرك? How do I show my gratitude to you? And you know, we all, we all, Allah gives us from time to time, Allah gives us things that we didn't expect. Allah gives us things that, you know, you, you go to the doctor, you make an appointment, you know, they take your blood, they check it, you know, and you sit at home and you think, oh, you know, what is for care to me, you know, or you, you know, you've got an appointment with a specialist, you know, you have to go and you have to appointment with a specialist and you know there's something wrong, but you don't know what it is, you know, and there the man says, mashallah, you know, uh, Mr. Abrams, nothing wrong with you. You can go home, mashallah. And now you think, sure. What do you think first? What do you say first? Alhamdulillah. Second, you think, now how must I thank Allah? How do you really thank Allah? Nabi Musa asked the question, how do I thank Allah? And Allah said to him, Oh Musa, This is taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh Musa, if you remember me, you thank me. Bas. Allah doesn't want you to give millions. No, no, no. Allah says, if you remember me, your remembrance of me is your thanks to me. Wa idha nasitani kafartani. And when you forget me, you are ungrateful to the favors which I bestow upon you. And we have the training ground in Ramadan where we are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 24 hours out of 24. Because fasting doesn't end at, at, at Bukha time. Many people think fasting ends at Bukha time. No, fasting doesn't end at Bukha time. Because at Bukha time, the next day begins. Isn't it? When Maghrib comes, the next day begins. You can't say, well, tomorrow morning at Fajr, the next day. No, no, no. So what about between Maghrib and Fajr? What, what is that then? They're not part of Ramadan. Now, like the Arabs, you know, and other people in other countries, they say, oh, Maghrib is finished. Now we can do whatever we want to do. All things we couldn't do during the day, well now, so in, in Arabia, in those countries, people don't sleep at night. They sleep in the day. Say, well, say Ramadan is in the day. And if you sleep in the day, it's an ibadah. So the up at night, no. Maghrib, the next day begins. The next day starts at my When you say, Bismillah rahman rahim you eat your day to drink your water, the next day of Ramadan starts. 
So conscious, what is consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What do we mean when we say taqwa is to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It means that and we can actually put it together, the fear and the consciousness. By creating a barrier between you and that which incurs the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is taqwa. Taqwa is to put in between you and sin a barrier. That you say to yourself, Faiq, this barrier you can't cross. This is the line you can't cross. You can cross all the lines, but if you do this, you are going to incur the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is taqwa. And taqwa, of course, is the highest virtue. And we know the hadith of the Nabi sallallahu when he said, La fadla li arabin ala ajameen, wa la li ajameen ala arabin, wa la li aswadin ala, wa la li abyadin ala ahmarin, wa la li ahmarin ala aswadin, illa bi, illa bi taqwa. Nabi sallallahu says, there is no superiority over an Arab over a non-Arab. Neither over a non-Arab over an Arab. Nor of black over white or white over black except to the degree of that person's consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except to the measure of taqwa the person has. Inna akramakum aindallahi aindallahi atqaakum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is not a person who wears this and this. No, no, no. The most noblest of you in the sight of Allah is he who has, who has the taqwa of Allah in his heart and in his behavior. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ittaqullah haqqa tuqati. Allah says, oh you people who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, real fear. Have the real consciousness of Allah. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ And do not die except in a state of Islam. Do not die except as a, as a Muslim. Now, if we look at other faiths, and I've always said to you, I mean, if you look at other faiths, if you look at Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, we find that these faiths, they stress the separation between the life of a person who has taken his religion as a sacred vocation and the life of an ordinary person. For example, in Catholicism, we find monks and nuns. They have adopted that kind of life, an unmarried life, as a sacred vocation. Apart from them, all the other Catholics consider themselves as ordinary people. In Hinduism, the same, the Brahmins and the non-Brahmins also have this separation. The Buddhists have the separation. They, you see them on TV, all these people dress in their orange cloaks. You know, they go into the mountains, they sit there, they become monks and nuns. So there's a clear distinction in Christianity, as an example, between those who in inverted commas, they have taqwa and are closer to God and those ordinary people down here who need those people to bring them also to closer to God. So you have this complete, you have the separation. In Islam, you don't have this polarization. Islam came to eliminate the polarization. Islam came to do away with the Hazratis, the Hazrajis and the, and the Sufis and the, and the people who, who wear a certain kind of clothes and they say, well, you see, we are a different breed. We have taken Islam as our vocation. We don't work, we depend on handouts. We sit at the graves and people come and they give us money. And we travel around the world and we collect money from everybody. And people are so gullible, they give us money. And we become rich and we go and live where? In Bishop's Court. Why? Because... We have imported this polarization and separation from Christianity. Just like spirituality. So, oh, you know, that person is a very spiritual person. I'm not a spiritual person. You're dead then. If you're not spiritual, then you're absolutely dead. Because only when the ruh is out of your body, you be, you, you're not spiritual anymore. Because then you're just a body. So we have imported all that we imported. We say, well, you know, this thing, spirituality sounds very nice. You know, the Hindus have it. 
and the Christians have it, and the Buddhists have it, you know, and all these people have it, so we must also have it in Islam. So we import, we import separation, we create clergy, we say there's an ulama class of people, and these ulama have the right to rule us, despite ourselves, you know, and we are the only people in the ulama, and therefore we have only folk who don't know Islam, and a few people on the top who knows Islam. And so Allah will put us, may Allah save us and put us in Jannah. But, you know, Allah may say one day, you Muslims, you've divided my deen, you've made ulama, and I did not create a class of clergy. I said every man is responsible to know his deen. Every woman is responsible to know their deen. Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslimin. My prophet came to you and said, to seek knowledge is followed on every male and female. No, what did you do? You became like the Catholics and the Christians and the Hindus and the Jews. You say, no. We have rabbis. The Jews say, we have our rabbis. If I want anything, I go to my rabbi. Hmm? And the Christians say, if I want anything, I go to my priest, my pastor. And the Muslims say, if I want anything, I go to my imam, my sheikh, my maulana. What's the difference? What's the difference? No difference. We're the, we're the same. We're not supposed to be the same. We're supposed to be different. All of us are supposed to know. Everything, not to say, well, you know, the alim knows, he knows Arabic. No, 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 you also supposed to. There's no, Allah's going to say, well, you know, only a few people, the Quran says, you know, talks about ulama who knows the language. No, 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 my dear brother, this, this, you're living an illusion. You're living an illusion. This is a big illusion. This is, this is the illusion of the West. This is what the West wants. The West wants to create an ulama class. The West wants to create a Sufi class. So what do they do? What do they do? They do what Christians do. They absorb the ulama class into their moneyed class. The Sufi class into their moneyed class. And what do they do? Then through these clergy and moneyed classes, they control the Muslims throughout the world. So they get somebody who is a big mufti and he gives a fatwa. Meanwhile, behind all the Strings are being pulled. And that is why an alim Islam, an alim real scholar, should be completely independent. And so Muslims, why? Every Muslim is an independent being. Because on the day of Qiyamah, you are going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, accountable to Him alone for your deeds and your actions. And if you take it upon yourself to take others as your responsibility, then of course that is your responsibility. So, this point that all Muslims are equal except in taqwa is a message which was a revolutionary message brought only by Muhammad This man when he came, this was the message he brought. Inna akramakum, indallahi atqaqum. He said to the world that from today, you're all equal in the eyes of Allah, except he who has more taqwa will be more equal in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks 151 times in the Quran about this quality of taqwa. It commands that this quality of taqwa is not about spirituality. What does it say? It says, Ya ayuha alladheena amanu surat al-hashr. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَلْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَّا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah says, oh you people who believe, have taqwa and work to see what provision you have made for yourself for tomorrow. Allah doesn't say, have taqwa and go sit in a cave, have taqwa and wear kurta, and a beard and sit in the majid the whole day. No, Allah says, Oh you people who believe, have taqwa and work to make a provision for yourself for tomorrow. What taqwa? And then Allah ends it again by saying, and have taqwa. So in Islam we don't have the separation. So anybody who comes along and says, well you see I belong to a different group of people, and you ordinary Muslims are a different group of people, they are denying the first message of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So in this life, my dear brothers and sisters, as I've said, سَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مَرَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ 
ard wa samawat wa ard uiddat lil muttaqin we are in this race of taqwa together rich and poor educated and uneducated leader and follower preacher and listener young and old man and woman men and women all must develop taqwa otherwise uiddat lil otherwise janna not for us not for me if i don't develop taqwa so important point then that there is no separation in islam between man and man between there's no class in islam there's no ulama class clergy class there's no ordinary class there's no middle class in the eyes of allah yes in material terms you have the rich and the poor and they say you know the rich get richer and the poor gets higher richer you got that one all right let's look at some No you may say you know Sheikh you talk about taqwa and taqwa and we must all have taqwa What is this given example So there's a hadith which I love to quote and I quoting I'm quoting it again today To give you an idea maf To give you an idea of what taqwa really is Is taqwa to read the Quran or the Quran in the month of Ramadan? What is taqwa? How do you develop this taqwa? There is a hadith Qudsi. Hadith Qudsi, as you know, are the the words is from the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the inspiration comes from Allah subhanahu wa taala. And the Nabi talks about salah. Now you know what do we say? What is the jannah for? Who is the jannah for the muttaqin? And what is the key to the jannah? So you're a muttaqi but if you're a muttaqi you have the key. And the key to the jannah is is what? Salah. Salah. What does Allah say about salah? Allah says, "Inna ma ataqabbalu as-salata mimman tawada'a biha li'adhmati wa lam yastatil bi 'ala khalqi wa lam yabid musirran 'ala ma'siyati." I want you to listen to this hadith if you if you if you And you know you can't sleep because your stomach is empty mashallah I'm so happy. I'm so happy you actually actually listen because and you haven't smoked before you come to the juma so your brain is also mashallah clear. Well I still see people at that coming to the tarawih smoking along the road very bad habit brothers. Don't do that. You know it's an aib. It's, it's already a, a, it's a very bad thing to smoke and to to smoke when young people are walking in the road with you it gives a very bad example. Smoke at home if you have to. Then brush your teeth. How can you walk to the masjid with a cigarette, and you must stand next to people who don't smoke? You know how you smell. I don't want to use the other word. And you disturb people in the salah. So please, I know some of you. I know. I know what it's like to be addicted to cigarettes. Mashallah. May Allah help us all. But we must try also in the Ramadan to try and kick the habit. So Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala here speaks about whose salah does Allah accept? This is a very important question. Allah himself tells us whose salah he accepts. So if you have if if you if you if you are if you can make ticks next to these items then you know alhamdulillah my salah is accepted. Because many of us think just by making salah it's accepted. No no. Allah himself says when he will accept your salah. Number one, Allah says Inma I only accept the salah of the following persons Mimman tawada'a biha li'adhmati that he makes his salah to glorify honor and honor me that's it so what is the objective of salah is to glorify allah when you say allahu akbar you really say allah you really say allah is great and you raise your hands in a way that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught you to raise not like you want just want to raise your hands Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar all kinds of no, you, from the beginning Allah looks at you and says I said Muhammad you look like this man is raising he says Allahu akbar Allah is great but look how he raises his hands he doesn't even know how to raise his hands subhanallah 
So what I'm saying to you, my dear brothers, again, knowledge and the seeking of knowledge is very important. From the cradle to the grave, even if you are 90, don't say, well, no, time is never up. Time is never up for making money, so how can time be up for learning the deen of Allah? So when you raise it, raise it nicely. Facing the Qibla. Net day. Don't think, well, the ayah, I raise my hands, the more barakah I get. No, no, no. no. You raise it. You raise your hand just so that you flex your arm. Don't raise your arm. You flex your arm. That's it. And this face is the Qibla. Allahu Akbar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I can't teach you the salah, no, we don't have time. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remember your objective of salah is not for you to go to Jannah. No, 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 you can't say well, I'm going to make salah because... I, no, no, you make salah because you're going there in order to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one. Number two, وَلَمْ يَسْتَطِلْ بِعَلَىٰ خَلْقِ Number two is, Allah says... That you make salah not in order for you to think, oh, for ik, you make salah, and you know that guy doesn't make salah, I'm better than him. No, 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 no. no. You see, I'm in the masjid for fajr in the morning, so oh, everybody's not here, they're all going to help. So I make tarawih salah, and my brother doesn't, so oh, I'm better than him. La, 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 la. No, 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 no. You must never think that you make salah, and when you make salah, you're better. Once you get that into your head, salah's batil. Number three. وَلَمْ يَبِدْ مُصِرًا عَلَىٰ مَعْسِيَةِ Number three is, you don't continue to do the same sin over and over and over and over again. إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنَعَنِ الْفَخْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Allah says, salah is to keep, supposed to keep you away from evil, from, doing, from making sin. That's number three. Number four, وَقَطْعَ النَّهَارَ فِي ذِكْرِ That you break up your day in order to remember Allah. When you break up your day? ذُوَرْ عَصَرْ مَغْرِبًا عِشَاءً فَجْرِ you break up your day, and you make your salah on time. You break, Allah says, قطع. Break the day. Allah doesn't say pause. Allah says, because the day, if you don't break the day, it'll break you. You have to break off. And not make an appointment. You have to break it. Asab, you have to break your day. For Maghrib, you have to break the day. For Isha, you have to break. Allah says, those who break their day, say, well, that is not part of this. So you must break the day. You must use your spiritual energy huh? to break the day, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa rahim al miskin. Ah. Those, 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 that was about you. That was about you and Allah. Now Allah says, I will only accept the salah of he who is kind to the poor. You don't think, well, I make salah, I'm interested in the poor people. I don't make sadaqah. Allah said, make salah, but make salah. Salah is the key to Jannah. If I make salah, it's fine. I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> it's integrated, my dear brothers. So this, is, this is your deen, like this. Everything is one. Not like that. No, no, like this. You can't separate your salah from being kind to the poor. وَرَحِمَ الْمِسْكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلُ وَالْأَرْمَلَ And the traveler, and the widow, and the widower. Look how beautiful is Islam. So Islam doesn't say, well... This excludes that. No, 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 it's all together. وَرَحِمَ musab, And that you are generous. And you are, you feel sorry for the person who has been struck by a calamity. Somebody's child dies, somebody's husband dies, somebody's father. You go there and you sympathize. Somebody had an accident with his car. Somebody, somebody lost his house. Somebody lost his job. If you hear somebody is in a calamity and you feel for that person, then know that you have taqwa. Know that you have taqwa. But if you say, then you must know you're far away from Allah. Far away from His rahmah. Far away from His taqwa. And even further away from the Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you, if you treat your salah like this, Make it for the sake of Allah, to glorify Allah. You don't think you're better than your brother. Uh, you don't continue to make the same sin. You break your day in order to remember Allah. You look after the poor and the needy. The widow and the widow is mentioned specifically, the armala. The traveler is mentioned specifically. The person who suffered a calamity is mentioned specifically. Then what about you? If this is you, and we should all be like that. 
Because with all the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then what, what does Allah say about you? Allah says about you. ذَلِكَ نُورُهُ كَنُورِ الشَّمْسِ that woman or man will be, his light or her light will be the, like the light of the sun. Subhanallah. You've not spent a cent yet. You've done nothing, really. Allah says, your light will be like the light of the sun. Aklahu bi'izzati. Allah says, I will feed you with my glory. Subhanallah. You'll become glorious in my eyes. I will send my angels to protect you. And if you are depressed, and you feel you are in darkness, I will put you into light, I will lighten up your life. And if you feel that you are not as intelligent as other people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you wisdom and intelligence. وَمَثَلُوا فِي خَلْقِ كَمَثَلِ الْفِرْدَوْسِ فِي الْجَنَّةِ And your likeness in the eyes of Allah is like the likeness of the Jannah al-Firdaus compared to the other Jannahs. So if you like this, you are a muttaqi. أُعِدَّ للمتقين And your Jannah will be yours. Another example. Also example which I've quoted before, an example which I give again. So these are the qualities of taqwa which will make your salah be accepted by Allah and you will be of those who are that muttaqin of those who will, will enter Jannah. Second example. Nabi Sallallahu was one day sitting in the Masjid al-Nabawi and he's, a man came past the door Oh, the Prophet said, أَطْلَوْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْآنَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ Nabi said to the Sahaba, in a few moments, a man will come past the door, and he will be a man of Jannah. He will be a muttaqi, in other words. Muttaqi. Sahaba didn't take much notice, so after a while, a man came past the door, and the man was walking. His face was dripping with the water of wudu, and he had his shoes in his left hand. Quickly he walked past the door and he was gone. So the next day again, Nabi Sallallahu was again sitting with the Sahaba. Again Nabi Sallallahu said, أَطْلَعُ عَلَيْكُمُ الْآنَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ He said again, man will come past, he will be a man of Jannah. Again the same man came past, he had just taken hudu, shoes in his left hand, walking quickly past the door. Third day it happened again. So the third day one of the Sahaba thought, to himself, subhanallah, we are sitting here in the inner circle, of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sitting in his in his dars in his teaching is teaching us. That man just walking past the door, he's not part of the circle. How come he's going to Jannah? Prophet didn't say we're going to Jannah, but that man is going to Jannah. So Abdullah ibn Amr he said to himself, "I'm going to go and ask this man. What is so special about him?" So he went to the man. He went to tell the man a white lie. He said to the man, "You know, my father threw me out of the house." I go, no, where you sleep? Can I come sleep by you? The man said, no problem. Come stay with me, no problem. I'm alone. No. Join me, join me. But what was his intention? His intention was he's going to spy on the man. He's going to spy on the man. See what this man is up to. What does this man do? That the Nabi himself has said that he will go to Jannah. He's an ordinary man. As I said, he wasn't part of the inner circle. So he goes... And he watches the man. So he's not sleeping. See, he sees the, man, sees the man comes from work in the evening. Man goes to Majid, makes Maghrib. Then the man goes for Isha. Then the man goes to sleep. So he says, well, this man must be doing something in the night. So he, he's up the whole night and he's watching the man. No, the man doesn't get up for tahajjud. No, no. Man doesn't do anything. The only thing he notices is when this man turns in his sleep, the man mentions Allah's name. So when a man turns in his sleep, he says, Subhanallah. Or say Allah. Or say Alhamdulillah. Fajr, the man will get up, go to the masjid, make salah, go to work, come back. Same. Same second night again, go to sleep after Isha'i, doesn't wake up, he doesn't read the Quran, doesn't make tahajjud, does nothing, just make salah and work and come home. So on the third day, he said to the man, you know, 
You know why, Mia? I actually told you a white lie, you know. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said that you are a man of Jannah. Now, you know, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi says that only about very special people. There are only 10 people about whom Allah has revealed that they will go to Jannah. You must be the 11th person. What is so special about you? I don't see you doing anything special, you know. You're just an ordinary, simple guy, you know. You just make a salah on time and that's it. Anything, tell me what, what is it so special about you? He says, you know, I have three things in my life. Then he says, I've got three things in my life. The first thing is, لا أجد في نفسي لأحد من المسلمين غشا. He says, I'm a man who has never ever thought about catching a fellow Muslim. Never. That's my philosophy. So I know what they say. Can we get a back to the Muslim? More than what is required. Not that he even thought he's just, this is just his philosophy. I will not catch my brother Muslim. That is it, then that is it. That is the price, that is the price. Or if that is the job, then that is the job. Or if that is what it is, then that is what it is. I'm not going to say, well, you know, I read Mercedes. So I can hear the tells I know I'm going to say, well, 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 I'm one price for everybody. So he was a one price man. That was his heart. That's the first thing he had. Secondly, he said, لا أحسد أحدا فيما أعطاه الله من خير. He said, number two is, I have never harbored any hasad. I've never thought Of having the feeling of what is hasan in English? Envy. I have never been envious of the good which Allah gives to my brother. I always say to Allah, MashaAllah. Allah's given you mashallah, my brother. Allah, mashallah, look at beautiful children you have, mashallah. Beautiful job you have, mashallah. What a beautiful always praising. Never envying. So first he didn't have the quality of rish. Second, he didn't have the quality of hasad. And the, so that was the two things. So the man said, is that all? He said, yeah, that's, that's all. Can't think of anything else. He said, you don't make sadaqah. You, 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 you don't get up for the hajjud. He said, I'm a working man. You know, I'm tired. I sleep at night. He said, but oh, there's another thing he says. Third thing. He says, the third thing is, lam abid daaginan ala muslim. He says, when I go and sleep at night, I forgive all the Muslims who may have harmed me. I never go and sleep hatred or dislike for any person. Subhanallah. Look at this. Look at the simplicity of this man whom the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa has said, he is a man of paradise. We think paradise means, oh, I must go to Umrah. Oh, I must... Ramadan, I get help. Oh, I must, where must I go? Oh, I must go to Makkah. As, as, as Hajj time, oh, I got money. Oh, I must go. Allah will forgive me. Stand on Arafah and I come back. And I do the same old things that I did before I went. No, not an iota of change. I still do the same business deals and wheels that I did before I went. No, no. Your Jannah lies right here, my dear brother. In your house, in your home, in your bed. That's where your Jannah is. Amongst your family and your children, in your community. So remember three things. Don't, don't, think about, don't think about catching another Muslim or another person. Number two, don't have hasad. Ask Allah to take it out of our hearts. My heart is not. Allah must take out the envy. Number three, if somebody has done anything to us, let it go. Let it go. Don't sweat the small stuff. Let it go. Don't say, Morochan, yes, it's done. my lawyer sin. Now, Friday, Monday morning, lawyer. He'll see what he will see what he doesn't want to do this, doesn't want to pay, doesn't want to do this. You'll see what I'm going to do. He'll see what I'm going to do to you.
Ay, kailangan si school nulo. And this is typical of men and our husbands and wives when they divorce each other. No jannah for them. No jannah. Subhanallah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, a woman who deprives her husband from seeing his children and a man who deprives his wife from seeing her children will never smell paradise. I repeat, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, a man who deprives his wife from seeing her children will not smell paradise and vice versa. And what is the fight today about? Today about no one can hear you can see, one can hear you La barang khaji say tait, la barang Ramadan is made. Weekends is Ian weekend is fine. La hawla wa la quwwata illa And they struggle, they struggle like this. If they die in that state, may Allah forgive them. May Allah subhanahu wa guide them. So the lawyers in the audience, please tell your people when they come. Please tell them. Don't sweat this small son. I have, an, I, I have a, a list here which I was given of five names of people who I must make dua for who's passed away. Dayaudin Mjedi, Ismail Kasik, Ishaq Khalat, Abdurrahman Abrams, Ibrahim Abrams. These are all people I knew. People who said, where you're sitting now at the back. I'm not saying anything about you. But these were people who, who sit at the back. And the many mashayikh and imams who stood where I'm standing, they're all gone. All gone. Gone. Just, they just gone. The life carries on. The mosque is still continuing. We carry on. So this is the end of it. This is the end of the fights that we have in the world today. All ends in the grave, my dear brothers and sisters. So, let things go. Because if you, you carry the burden if you don't let it go. Other person don't carry, you carry the burden. Don't carry burdens in your life. Let it go. If you can't solve it, if you think it's going to bring animosity, let it go. And finally, the last point about what is taqwa. So I've, I've given you the taqwa, three things of this man. I've given you the taqwa of how to gain the acceptance of your salah. And finally, the lid on the path of taqwa is yaqeen. What is yaqeen? Yaqeen means to put your absolute 105,000% trust in Allah alone. That's yaqeen. And an example of yaqeen, a very good example, which I always give, is the example of Nabi Ibrahim a.s. Nabi Ibrahim a.s. found himself in a situation, as you know, where he was going to be swung into the fire. Namrud made a... They, Namrud, they couldn't get near the fire, it was so big they couldn't get near the fire. So they thought, how are we going to put this man, throw him in the fire, if we can't... We, nobody can get near the fire. So they made a swing... And they swung Nabi Ibrahim into the fire. So as Nabi Ibrahim is going through the air, going to this massive fire, Jibreel comes to him. And Jibreel says to him, Ya Ibrahim, Allah sent me. Anything you want me to do for you? Is there anything, oh Ibrahim, that you want me to do for you? Maybe I should send... Command the wind, the angel of the wind to blow the fire out. Let it rain so it's distinct extinguish the fire. What was Nabi Musa? What was Nabi Ibrahim's reply? What did he say? What did you have said and I have said? Just catch the swing quickly before it. <laughs> First catch the swing and then you put out the fire. Or just take me off the swing and fly with me some to some other place. I mean, who wants to burn in the fire? What did he say? He was of the Never mind what. No. My Allah, I put my trust in Him. He said, As for you, Amma ilayka ya, ya Jibreel, as for you, Jibreel, I don't need you. Don't need you. Wa amma ilallah, as for Allah, ilmuhu bihali hasbi min suali. As for Allah, He said, Allah's knowledge of my condition is enough for me. Allah's knowledge of my condition is enough for me. The fact that Allah knows what's happening to me is, I don't have to ask Him. Why should I ask Allah? Allah knows my condition. I don't have to say, Ya Allah, save me. Ya Allah, save me. No, no, no. Allah knows my condition. Doesn't He? Oh, Jibri, doesn't Allah? Of course. So, His knowledge, why must I ask? So, what did Allah do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't tell Jibri what to do. 
Allah spoke directly to the fire. Why? Because he put his trust in Allah. Allah didn't, there was no, inter, no more intermediaries. All the intermediaries, gone. But if we put our trust in man, you'd always need an intermediary. You always need somebody who you must go to to ask when you're in spiritual trouble. But Nabi Ibrahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the fire, Ya Nar, kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. Oh fire, be cool and calm and peaceful over Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam. So when he landed in the fire, he landed in a garden of the gardens of paradise. That's taqwa. That's taqwa. That's being a Muslim. Good Muslim. All Allah wants from me and you is to be good Muslim. Pass. Good character, good Muslims. Make your salah on time. Make your salah. If you can't make it on time, make your salah. That's important. And make your salah for the sake of Allah. And forget about all the other trimmings that we've added to this deed. All the trimmings, you know. Cut off all the trimmings. You know, and just do what you have to do. And follow the Quran and follow the Sunnah of Muhammad. And be a good person. That's all. That is what will take good, a good person who says, La ilaha illallah, he will be in the company of Muhammad in the Jannah. Right? And help the poor, help the needy, be a good person, be a kind and a good person. So may Allah subhanahu wa give inshallah that in this month of Ramadan, we are in the race of taqwa and we see to it that we don't earn the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. Oh yeah, there's just one more thing. One more thing. Uh, before I forget. Before I die next, before next week, so I forget, you know, to tell you. But you'll have noticed that you make adhan now at 22. And then you make adhan again. <clears throat> when the imam is on, on the member. Now, just a point, and you all know this, and I'm just repeating. That there is no rakats before Salat al Jumu'ah. You know there's no nawaitu salli fal salli jumaa rakatani qabliyatan. There's no qabliyatan for jumaa. Why not? Because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to come out of his house and get on the mimbar. He didn't make two rakats before he came into Of course, if you come into the masjid, make tahitul masjid. But there's no salah, sunnah salah before salatul jumaa. So the question is, after the first adhan, what salah do we make? Because I also get up sometimes, make surah ka sunnah. That is not qabliyata. That is just two raka sunnah. That's yuniya, nawaitu sali sunnatan, raka'atani illa ta'ala. Not connected to salat al jumaa Inshallah Allah will give you reward for it. If you make it, you make it. If you don't make it, also fine. But this is separate from you, tahiyatul masjid. So remember, there's two rakas after jumaa But no, two rakas before jumaa Shukran wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.